Now in this video, I want to look at another example of um, solving triangles. And this one is called side side angle. So notice the difference here from the last video. In the last video, we had two angles. Um, and so we solved them pretty much the same way, even though they were technically different setups. Um, but when you have the two angles, we're able to find that third angle very quickly using the sum of 180 degrees. So in these examples here, you're going to be given two sides and an angle. Um, and the angle is not in between the two sides either. So it's a side side angle. And I have an example here that we're going to see. You can see that I'm giving a side, a side, and then another angle. So it's not the angle in between, it's one of the outside angles. Now these triangles are pretty tricky because different things can happen when you're trying to solve them. So the first thing that could happen is that it solves perfectly fine. You have one solution, so you get one complete triangle in the end. Um, now it could turn out to be a right triangle or it could be oblique, it just depends on the setup. So just one thing to note. Uh, the same thing that could happen is you have no triangle, meaning that as you're trying to solve, you end up with a no solution. Um, so what happens is, is the angles and the lengths don't work out. They would not form a triangle. Um, so like one of the sides would be too short or something like that. It wouldn't actually work. Um, you know, for instance, like maybe your triangle looks like this, and then it never actually meets the other side or something. So it's not actually a triangle. And then the third thing that could happen is you actually get two answers. So you get two separate triangles that could work for the same given information. Um, so these ones seem to be a little bit trickier and a little bit harder to go through, but we can still do it. And we're still going to use the law of signs here. So that's not going to change. Um, so the thing is, we can't start with the idea of the sun being 180 degrees because I don't have that information. Um, but I can start with the law of signs in this case. So we're going to do it kind of backwards. Now, for the law of signs, now, what I should say too, I just drew a quick picture here. Just because I draw a picture doesn't mean I know there's going to be a solution. Um, it just helps to draw a picture just to visualize what's possibly going to happen. Um, so when you're drawing or when you're setting up a triangle, I do recommend drawing a picture. It may turn out that there is no solution and it's not really a triangle, but draw the picture first just so you have an idea where everything lies and that will help you get set up. Remember when you're doing law of signs, you do need one pair that's complete. So here I have my angle for A and I have the length of A. So this has to be part of my um, starting law of signs piece. Okay. All right, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use um, A over sine A here. Again, that's the one piece that I actually know completely. Um, and then what I'm going to go ahead and do next is I'm going to use my B information, right? Because I don't really have any information for C here, but I do have my information for B. So I'll go ahead and use that. All right, so for A is 81 over sine of 43 degrees. B is 62 over sine of um, B. So now here to solve, um, you could do it a few different ways. You can use the same technique we've been doing, multiplying by sine B on both sides to start, or you could always just cross multiply. That works too. I'm going to multiply by sine B and just use that same format. So when I do that, I have um, 81 times sine B over sine of 43 degrees is equal to 62. Um, and I'm not quite done here, though. I do need to clear this out. I'm trying to solve for B, really, so sine B. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal here. And I have that sine of B is equal to 62 sine of 43 degrees all over 81. Now at this point, I would go ahead and use my calculator on this piece here. So I have 62 times the sine of 43. And again, make sure you're in degree mode. Divide that by 81. And I get that sine B 
is about 0 0.5220 um, there. Stop at four decimal places. Now I know it says to round. You don't wanna round in the middle of work though. You wanna make sure you use quite a few decimal places and then we round at the very end of the process. So that's why I'm not using just one decimal place here or anything, I'm using four. Now, my goal was to find the angle. So think about how do you find the angle here? You would use the inverse, right? So I want to use sine inverse of 0 0.5220, and that will give me approximately what B is. Uh, I say approximately because this is rounded. So you know, again, it may be slightly off, um, but we're gonna go ahead and do that. So here I just went in and typed my inverse sign, um, and I got that the inverse sign there was about 31.4 degrees, and it does want me to round to the nearest degree. So at this point, I can round, and I have B is about 31 degrees. Now, the thing is, is that I don't really know all my possibilities here, right? So all I know is that the sum of my angles in a triangle are 180 degrees. Um, so Maybe sine is bigger than this. If you think about it, sine is positive in both the first and second quadrant. So it could be an acute angle, which I'm given here, but it could also be an obtuse angle. So you have to consider both possibilities. So this is your first possibility, which is the first quadrant um, answer. But sine is also positive in the second quadrant. So if I think about that, how do I get the other value? Well, I just take 180 degrees and I subtract 31 degrees and I get 149 degrees. And again, this is approximate because I was rounding here. Um, so there are two possible answers and you're gonna see this a lot when doing that um, side, side angle format. You wanna consider both. Uh, so now what you're gonna do is we can check for a second. So if I think about 31 here, well, 43 plus 31 is 74 degrees. That's, that seems fine, right? But if I plug in 149, well, 149 plus the other angle of 43 that I know is 192. So I'm already too big. That's gonna be over 180 for the total. So this actually doesn't work. Okay, so in this case, I have to throw out the second option. Um, and this is where you can have two solutions. If they both seem to work and be less than 180 degrees total, then you have two answers. Um, but if adding that in with the angle you already have puts you over 180, then there's no way that could work. So this has to get thrown out. I actually only have one solution here, at least at this point. Okay, so I'm gonna work with just the 31. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put that 31 degrees in here. So now I can find my other angle, right? So angle C, well, I know that 43 degrees plus 31 degrees plus C is equal to 180. 43 and 31 is 74. So my other angle then would be 106 degrees. So I have one obtuse angle in this case. My triangle is not really drawn to scale here, but you get an idea. We already have one larger angle there, that 106. So I'm almost done. I have all three angles now. I have two sides. I just need the third side. So I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna go ahead and, so I guess we'll say this is step two. Here's step three. I'm gonna find my other side. So I start with A, sine A, and this time I'm gonna work with C. So C, sine C. Now my A here was 81, sine of 43 degrees. My C here, I don't know, but my angle is 106. And this is rounded, so it would be, everything's approximated. All right, so I'm gonna multiply by sine 106 here here on both sides. So C is equal to 81 times sine of 106 degrees 
over sine of 43 degrees. And again, I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and do this one on your own and you get about 114.2. Now they didn't give us any units here, um, which is okay, I guess. It's always good to have units if you can. So here, that would be our final answer. Um, in this case, all three sides are filled in, all three angles. So we are finally done. All right, let's do another example with side side angle. I want to show you one of each of the three things that can happen. All right, so it's going to be another side side angle. So we're going to go ahead, solve triangle uh, ABC. If A is equal to 75 degrees, A is equal to 51, and B is equal to 71. Again, they're not giving us units here, but that's okay. Um, again, I'm going to start by drawing a picture. Again, I don't really know what this triangle looks like, but it just helps me personally to have a visual. So I'm just going to kind of draw it as um, just a regular triangle, and then we'll see if it actually works. So my A is 75 degrees. Uh, let's see, A across from it is 51, and then B is 71. So again, notice you have a side-side angle. So if I just go around the triangle, again, the angle is kind of on the outside of the two sides that's given, so side-side angle. All right, I know that I have my A information again here, so that's gonna go ahead and be kind of my key starting point. And then the only other information I have is I have the length of B, so I'm gonna use that as well. So I have 51 over sine of 75 degrees, 71 over sine of B. Now to solve here, I'm gonna go ahead first, I'm gonna multiply by sine B on both sides. And again, this is just one way to solve. You could also cross multiply um, and start that way. Uh, And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the reciprocal. So I'm going to multiply by sine of 75 degrees over 51. So I get that sine B is equal to 71 times the sine of 75 degrees all divided by 51. And here again, you're just going to plug this into your calculator and use a few decimal places when you round there. And I get that sine B is about 1.34. Now, when I go to do my, my inverse, let's see, right? Sine inverse. Then I get this happening on my calculator. It says calculate domain error. Um, and the reason that happens is because remember, you're dealing with the regular basic sine function here. And your sine function, if you think about the y-axis, never goes above one, right? It's between negative one and one. So 1.34 doesn't make sense. And that's why we're getting this error message. So this cannot happen. There's no angle that's going to work here. So this is not going to work. And here's an example where there is no solution. So this actually isn't a triangle. Uh, I'm not sure what it is, right? But it, it's not actually a triangle. So there's no solution here and we would be done. All right, let's do one more of this style. And this one, you're gonna see two solutions because I wanna show you one of each. Um, so again, this is gonna be another side side angle setup. And you're going to see one where two solutions actually do hold. So we're going to go ahead and solve triangle A, B, C. If A is equal to 40 degrees, A is equal to 54, and B is equal to 62. Uh, I'm going to say some running. We're going to do the same rounding technique we have been in the videos. So we'll round lengths to one decimal place. Um, and we'll round degrees to uh, the nearest degree. So lengths, going to use tenths. And then um, for angles, we're going to use the nearest degree. 
meaning the nearest whole degree. So we're not gonna round to any decimal places there. All right, again, I'm just gonna go ahead and draw a picture. Um, I don't know that this is exactly what my triangle will look like, but it just helps me stay organized. So my A is 40 degrees, across from it, the A is 54, and then my B is equal to 62. Now, in all of our examples, they keep giving us the angle for A. They don't have to. I mean, they could give us the angle um, for B instead, right? And then you would start with B as being your, your base ratio. Um, it really doesn't matter. So as long as you have a ratio that is complete, then you can get started using the law of signs. So here, my only part that's complete would be the A's, right? I have the angle and I have the length. And then the first thing I can solve for is B. I don't have any information for C, so I can't solve for that just yet. So I have, let's see, 54 over sine of 40 degrees. And then I have 62 over sine of B. E. And we're gonna do that same process for solving. And then I'm gonna use the reciprocal. And of course, if you get to the point where you can do some of this in your head or you start to see the patterns, that's fine too. Just make sure you're careful. You don't wanna make any little mistakes, of course. All right, so you can use your calculator here at home. When you multiply 62, so this is a 62, times sine of 40 degrees. Let's see, I already did it out. Um, divided by 54, you get about 0 0.7380. And what you do next is you take the inverse of that. All right, again, remember we happen to be in degree mode here. So just make sure you're checking your mode and you're in the right mode, particularly if you start and stop, if you're doing the homework. Inverse of 0 0.7, 380 gives me about 47.6 um, degrees there. And we're going to round to the nearest degree. So B is about 47, uh, we'll say 0.56 degrees. So it's about 48 degrees. Now, remember with sine, that would be your answer for the first quadrant, right? 48 degrees. But don't forget that sine is also positive in the second quadrant. So here, to find the other angle, we just take 180 and we go ahead and we subtract. So let's see, 180 minus 48 would be 132 degrees. Now you want to check them. The first angle, I mean, should check out 48 plus 40 is only 88, so that's fine. And when I try the second angle, well, 132 plus 40 degrees is 172 degrees, which is less than 180 degrees. So they actually both work. You could have triangles with both of them, um, not together at the same time, but meaning we could have two separate triangles and that would both create solutions here. So we're gonna go ahead and do both versions. So we're leaning towards two solutions. Now, I mean, there's still always a chance that you get like an error somewhere, but you probably shouldn't at this point. All right, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna draw version one. And these are not to scale, so just bear with me. So my first triangle, A is 40 degrees, and then my B is 48 degrees, right? So that was the first answer. Um, we knew that this was 62, and we know that this is 54. And in the second version, one of our angles is 132 degrees, so that's going to be obtuse. Uh, I'm not the best at drawing obtuse angles, but you can kind of bear with me there. So this would be 40 degrees still. Our B here is 132 degrees. 
uh, let's see, across from A, we had 54, across from angle B, we had 62, and then we still had to find C. So there's actually two possible uh, versions that could work here. Now we can find the third angle by using the 180 degree as the sum. So 40 degrees plus 48 degrees plus C would be 180. This gives us 88 degrees. So about 92 degrees there. Uh, it is approximate, right? Because everything is being rounded now. So it's about 92 degrees. And then on this side, our third angle, well, we have 40 degrees plus 132 degrees plus C is equal to 180. So you have 172. And then when you subtract that from both sides, you see that C is only, uh, oops, sorry, eight degrees instead. So I have all three angles in each case. The only thing I need in both cases is the length of C. So I do have to solve them both separately. They're gonna be different answers because you have different degrees. Um, so just be careful you don't mix up your work. I'm kind of organizing it um, vertically here, just kind of keeping my paper cut in half, or you could just do one at a time. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go and start with A over sine A is equal to C over sine C. And then it's gonna be the same thing over here. So my A was 54, um, 40 degrees. I don't know my C, but I know my angle now, which is 92 degrees. Here, I would multiply both sides by 92 degrees. So I have 54 times sine of 92 degrees over sine of 40 degrees. And let's see, I get about um, 84.0 there for my length. So my final length is going to be about 84.0. And then on this side, I'm looking at 54 over sine of 40 degrees is equal to C over sine of 8 degrees. I multiply both sides by sine of 8. So I have 54 sine of 8 degrees over sine of 40 degrees equals C. And again, you can use your calculator there um, as well, and you get about... 11.7. So my length here is 11.7. Now it does make sense that this would be a much smaller length, right? Because you're going across from eight degrees. Um, here you're going across from 92 degrees. So remember that you do have those ratios there, um, which hopefully makes sense. So notice here, right? The largest length is across from the largest angle. The smallest angle is across from the smallest length. And you see that here too, smallest angle, smallest length, um, largest angle, largest length. So it's a good, nice check as well to make sure you've set your picture up correctly. So here we have two triangles that actually we can form from the beginning information.